Phil Bradler here joining you from Riviera Lanes in West Dallas, the 2015 High Five Gear Invitational. Bowlers are practicing right now. They'll be bowling trios matches. Once our trios champion is determined, those bowlers will bowl a individual five frame High Five Gear Challenge match to see which of those bowlers will take home a High Five Gear custom jersey valued at over $100. Joy Serrar is here with me on the call and we'll both be back from Riviera Lanes for our opening trios Baker match in just a couple of minutes. Make sure you stay tuned. Opening team match here for the High Five Gear Invitational from Riviera Lanes in West Dallas. Took our top finishers from the tournament today. Put them on the trios teams. They'll be bowling Baker trios to see which team advances to our High Five Gear Challenge match. That'll be a five frame game for a bonus High Five Gear custom jersey worth over $100. Thanks to our friends at High Five Gear and Joey. Freddie Peterson the fourth, our only lefty on the show leading us off. Yeah, Freddie's got a nice game on the left side and He's subbed in our Monday Flat Earth League a number of times so far this year. Yeah, he's made the trip back sometimes on the weekends. He goes to Robert Morris University in Chicago and uh, comes home, stays a little late on Mondays, and then probably takes the last train back to school in time for classes on Tuesdays. He's got a good, solid game, knows how to change equipment on the fly, makes good lane adjustments. Very solid game. Yeah, using a pink stingray here for his spare ball. I think that ball may be older than him, and... Uh, Unfortunately, hooks away from that four pin and leaves an open frame on the board for his team. Yeah, unusual for Freddie. Normally, he's a very good spare shooter. I will say all six bowlers very stylish today. Yeah, most of them in high five gear jerseys already. A couple other ones looking to get a high five gear jersey on if they win the singles portion of this event. Along with anything else they've won prior to the TV show today. But Molly Brando stepping up. Comes a little high and can't break up the 4 7 10. Yeah, pays the maximum price going rather direct on her first shot. Uh, lane pattern here, it's a modified version of Riviera Lane's house pattern. A little more oil on the outsides than they usually use. Uh, you'll see a lot of the bowlers probably playing very direct just on the basis of wood lanes are a little tougher sometimes to adjust to, especially when you haven't bowled them in a while. They have a tendency to roll earlier and not as much hook on the back end. That is correct, and typically the track will play on a wood condition because there's a little wear area. Yeah, usually, you, especially at the right here at Riviera Lanes, that track area just inside of Second Arrow, actually. A lot of the righties like to get a little bit deeper, let that dry boards on the lane bring the ball back, but not a lot of dry boards out here for our players today. And uh, Jalen Hannon? Family owned Sunset Bowl in Waukesha. That's why her team is named Sunset Bowl for this event. Made the under 15 junior gold top 16 championships last year in Chicago. You can see why right there with a great ball for a strike. Yeah, she ripped the rack on her opening shot, and she also has subbed in her Monday Flatter League. Yeah, a lot of these kids, because they know that's what they're going to face in college, they love bowling tournaments that have tougher conditions. They don't want to bowl on the house shots, they want to bowl on stuff where they know if they see it in college, they're going to be able, able to adjust to it easier. Exactly. Otherwise, it's a rude awakening when you bowl on your first sport condition and you're only accustomed to house conditions. Well, last time we saw Megan Posick on TV, she was bowling doubles with Michael James at our season kickoff event down at Classic Lanes in Greenfield. Unfortunately, Michael James is on the IR right now. He's the secretary of our Flat Earth League on Monday nights, and we're hoping he gets back on the lane sometime before the end of the season, even if it's just to throw one ball. Wanna Send our best wishes out to Michael. Yeah, had a little work done on that knee of his, and uh, he could be back in action as early as January or February. Let's hope so. And Megan, just a little wide on that spare attempt. Two opens on the board for Team 3M. Obviously, with Megan, Molly, and Maddie on that team, it's pretty easy to pick up a team name for that for the kids as they name their teams prior to being on TV today. Baker Schmidt out of Fond du Lac. We'll see his brother Blake in our next match, and Baker gets a little soft at release, and I think that's why he came up high for that 410. Yeah, that ball looked good for about the first 50 some feet, and then a little quick reaction on the friction. 
pays the maximum price as well. Let's see if he gives us a shot. Baker throwing a IQ tour on his strike ball. Blue old blue hammer. Once again, these kids using bowling balls that are older than they are for their spare balls, and he gets one on the spare. Still keeps his team in the lead. Come on, Maddie. But with Maddie Brandos stepping up, obviously Molly and Maddie being sisters. And the only pro that comes to mind that does that same thing. Uh, Sean Rash and in fact two of them Danny Wiseman Danny uses an old black diamond I believe yeah, and we've seen Sean use some older spare balls old Rhino pros or whatever to you know, a lot of pros nowadays going to urethane just for the durability of the shells compared to plastic and it doesn't overslide on a lot of the PBA conditions that do have a lot of oil on them that's correct yeah, they both go reasonably straight, but the urethane added longevity and added traction cross lane. Not added hook, but added traction. Well, Matty Brando's just trying to get two, get out of here for the frame. Team's down by less than a mark. Both these teams a little slow starts out of the gate. Both teams working on opens. Let's see what Freddie Peterson can do here to get himself up. And we see him switching his thumb insert there, Joey. We see a lot of players going to that nowadays just for the consistency of going from bowling ball to bowling ball. Well, as you know, you and I both use interchangeables, and uh, the advantages are probably too numerous to mention. Well, we don't have much time before the commercial break, and unfortunately for Freddie, I think he would have liked to throw that in the commercial break and not have everybody see that he's left the 5-10 split. Well, you know, he made an adjustment. He moved right with his feet off his opening shot, which crept high, and kind of unusual pin action. There may have been some pins colliding with one another and not blowing that five pin, but yeah. he'll give this a run. Well, and it's definitely possible, too, with the wood lanes and, and a little bit of a drier oil pattern than these bowlers are used to, the ball can roll out. It can lose all its energy before it gets to the pin deck, and you get over deflection. The ball deflects away from the five pin, where it normally would saw through the rack and take the five pin into the ten in Freddie's case. Let's we'll see if Molly can stop the bleeding for Team 3M here. And typically on a wood pattern, a lot of players tend to migrate to either higher RG equipment or lower differential equipment to kind of store and enhance back-end energy. And uh, she's fighting it with Loft right there, and a great shot to get into the commercial break for this game. Gets Tim 3M with a strike, and we'll be back with the rest of our opening match here from the High Five Gear Invitational in just a couple of minutes. Make sure you stay tuned. providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our Wall of Fame and our current specials at bpsmilwaukee.com. Eileen's Bowling Buddy, used by high school and college coaches and members of the PBA Tour to train, warm up, and rehab. Get all the information at eileensbowlingbuddy.com. Fifth frame coming up here at Riviera Lanes. The 2015 High Five Gear Invitational rolls on. Jalen Hayden stepping up for Sunset Bowl. Team taking on Team 3M to advance to our championship team match here today. Winner of that team match will have a chance to bowl each other in singles in the High Five Gear Challenge for Jersey. And Jalen Hayden, two for two, Joey. With mighty good shots, both of them. A rack ripper the first shot and high flush the second. He's got a very solid game, as you can see. Good tempo, good balance at the line. Megan Posek stepping a, up. That yeah, brings a smile to her face when uh, definitely. things see, go your way. Well, and talking things over with the teammates back there for now. I mean, if they end up winning the team part of the event, there'll be a uh, singles rough. May not be chatting so much with them then. And uh, something you don't see too often in bowling, Joey, is a solid five pin left by Megan Posek. Yeah, a good shot by Megan, but I think she is a little too deep inside of the oil pattern and doesn't have quite the rev rate to get that five to cooperate. Yeah, sometimes the bowlers at lower rev rates it's that fine line of playing that little bit of the oil line versus giving up some carry to stay in the pocket but no problem covering up that five pin for Megan. Well at least they're not opening now they're getting marked so they're all settled in. Nervous jitters should be gone from both teams. 
One pin lead for Team 3M against Sunset Bolt. Baker Schmidt looking to change that though, if he can get a double on the board. That's pretty Christy. clean. Pretty clean off the hand and pretty sweet through the pins. Yeah, that shot he had in the third frame, he just got a little soft with his release on the bomb, just probably tried to fit it a little bit. Easy to do when first time on under the TV lights and that time pure off the hand and 10 in the pit. Yeah, Team 3M has got their work cut out for them, but the Brando's girls can help carry the load here. Nice shot, down low, almost a little too strong on the back end. Yeah, it revs up a little early once again on, I guess you can say because of the wood lanes, a lot of these bowlers aren't used to playing on wood nowadays. Majority of the centers in, in Wisconsin now have converted to synthetic surfaces, and with those synthetic surfaces, Ball rolls a little later and a little stronger on the back end. These, if it rolls up a little earlier, you have a tendency to go through the nose and just nothing on the spare, unfortunately, for Maddie Brando. So now that puts her team down by 25 pins to Sunset Bowl. And if Freddie Peterson can get a team three bagger on the board for his team with this shot. Well, Freddie's 0 for 2 on his strike attempts, and you know he's been thinking about his adjustment prior to this shot. Freddie just turned 19 years old, freshman at Robin Morris University, Illinois, and there's the three-bagger for the team now and the 35-pin lead with only three and a half frames to go. Team 3M really has to start striking right now. Yeah, they have good control of the pocket, Sunset Bowl, that is. It should be just a matter of time, unfortunately, for Team 3M. Well, Molly Brandos here, 17 high series, a 708. Loves to play volleyball. Her and her sister are on the same team at Brookfield Central. And a great shot. And of course, when you make the best shot of the day, you leave the blower 710, Joey. Great shot and a bad, <laughs> bad break on that shot. Five was gone, but a double tap nonetheless. Let's see if she gives it a ride or. No, uh, it's a $100 you almost scholarship. Have to, though. Yeah, you almost have to. Time. Being down 40, 50 pins. Yeah, $100 scholarship. If she were to convert this 710, and you know, we've seen a few made here in league during the years here at Riviera Lanes. These older Brunswick pin setters have a little shorter distance back to that cushion. The pin can bounce off the cushion, hit the ball, and bounce back out on the pin deck. But unfortunately, you have to hit one of the pins to get a chance of making the 7 Yes, that is a prerequisite. <laughs> and now, pretty much game over here for Sunset Bowl. If Jalen Hayden can get her team's string out to four in a row, they will advance to the championship match against Team BAD. Or as they like to call themselves, Team Bad, with Blake Schmidt, Danielle Choup, and Adam Richa. And that's going to be game over right there. Sunset Bull will advance. Yeah, she's, she showed us three different strikes on her three attempts. And all pretty on the scoreboard. Absolutely. And uh, with Jalen just being 15 years old, turning 16 later in the year, uh, a couple of years of high school, to go for her yet. Her team, Waukesha West, always a powerhouse the last few seasons for high school bowling. Yeah, there'll be plenty of colleges looking after her game, I'm sure, by the time she's a senior. Yeah, and same thing for Maddie Brandos and Molly Brandos. They'll be bowling with the co-op program for New Berlin Eisenhower High School again this year. Even though they go to Brookfield Central, they can co-op with another school. And uh, last year at our midwinter Team Classic at Castle Lanes. It was New Berlin Eisenhower and Waukesha West for the girls' title. So those ladies very familiar bowling against each other in the high school ranks and in various other tournaments, including our youth challenge tournaments. Well, Baker Schmidt just looking to keep string and strikes for his team, keep things going, and gets a seven nine out late. Yeah, they're looking pretty strong here, and I'm sure he'll make a subtle adjustment after that potential split, yeah. high flush in the pocket. Well, we'll see what happens when Team BAD comes on. They're going to have lane choice, so Sunset Bowl might get bumped to lane six. They'd still get some practice if that was the case, however. Great shot there by Maddie Brandos to finish off her day. Not the finish she was looking for, but all these bowlers made a little in the event prior to making TV, so always good to get some merchandise in the bowler's hands. Well, that's it, and, and no need to get down on themselves. I mean, all bowlers are gonna have good days and bad days. And, uh, oh my. And that what is a good day for <laughs> Freddie there. <laughs> the fist pump on the way back, and 
Last time we saw one of those on TV was actually a match that Freddie was involved in up at the Visit Sheboygan Open. You just saw it on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel when Nick Hagen carried out the one, two, four from behind being right-handed. Yeah. That's a good example of those shorter pin cushions you were mentioning to earlier. How the pins can come out of the pit. That's just a little quick and for Freddie. Wild, wild pitch, right? <laughs> I'm sure he's happy with the finish. Nice 200 game, possible 212 with a spare. Well, 213, 213 with a spare. You are correct. So, yep. And uh, probably practice a strike shot one more time. Pin count really doesn't matter. It's not throwing off. It's not sandbagging. You're just trying to see what you can do to get yourself back in the pocket. Try a little bit of a different line. And that yeah, stays with the strike line and uh, gets two. But that would have been a 2-5 or a 2-4-5 possibly for Freddie. So he'll make some adjustment on that getting into our team championship match today. And with Molly Brandos finishing things off for Team 3M. Still a 159 possible out there for that team, but they're all taking home a little something today. We want to thank Tom Clark, Commissioner of the PBA and the PBA Tour for providing all of the finalists on TV here today with a one-month subscription to Extra Frame so they can watch their favorite pro bowlers bowl anytime because Extra Frame is always on, whether it's live events such as the Bullmore AMF US Open or of course the big event of the year coming up in December the World Series of Bowling 7 from Reno, Nevada. If you don't have an Extra Frame subscription, you go to PBA.com and get all the information about Extra Frame and watch the best bowlers in the world well, and, and learn things as well Phil. They, they make mention of uh, what ball layouts and surface changes can do to the reaction when to use a high RG or a low differential ball comes into play yeah, so, right you, you yeah. can not only watch but you can you can learn as you watch oh yeah uh, Ron Hicklin I'm gonna have the pleasure of working with him in Reno Ron used to be a ball designer for Ebonite International now he's set off on his own and has a good website called creating the difference which is if you're looking for little tips about bowling and and supplies and such that so you can get to help your game out, you can go check out creatingthedifference.com as well as Molly Brando's finishes off the game for her team. Sunset Bowl will be taking on Team BAD for the championship here at Riviera Lanes for the High Five Gear Invitational. Join us back for that in just a couple of minutes. Team final here from Riviera Lanes in West Dallas, the 2015 High Five Gear Invitational. Team BAD versus Sunset Bowl. Winner of this match advances to our High Five Gear Challenge five frame match. Try to win themselves a High Five Gear custom jersey valued at over $100 or other High Five Gear merchandise to those finalists as well to add on to what they've already won here today at Riviera Lanes. And Adam Rich is starting things off, and we've seen a lot of Adam on our Monday Night Flat Earth League, Joey, and we know that young man can throw a lot of strikes. Adam has game, lots of power. He's got a good array of bowling balls to choose from, and mentally I've seen him mature as the seasons have gone by. Whereas, you know, a lot of kids, when you're young, you get upset too easy, you get mad at a tap now and then. Eventually you realize it's part of the game and it happens to everybody and you accept them more. You don't like them, but you no. accept bad breaks or taps more readily. And, and, and Adam has matured as a bowler. Well, and he's really gotten to know his equipment and has quite a few different pieces drilled up. He's using a Motive Revolt he won last year. Uh, he got that as a kind of, I guess you, as a gift, he donated his $500 scholarship to the Max McGee Foundation for Juvenile Diabetes when he bowled in the Kids Bowling for Kids event that you saw on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. And you know, Motive was so touched by what Adam had done at that point in time, donating that scholarship money to research juvenile diabetes that they donated that bowling ball for him. And we always want to thank everybody at Motive for 
that gift and their previous support, and all the bowling ball companies that have supported us throughout the years here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Well, the ball companies realize the youth are the future of our sport. It's kind of a cliche, but it is a true cliche as they catch an early double. Danielle Choup gets that ball rolling up nicely. Kind of similar game to what Janella Hanen has, speed-wise and rev-wise, and right in that same area. A little different bowling ball, though, where we're seeing Danielle use a Storm Crux, where with, looks like we got a ball change here for Ms. Hannon, and uh, she's going to something solid. So she was using an IQ Tour earlier, Pearl, and now she's using, looks like a PBA Skill 2.0 ball, so that's a urethane ball that they use with the Teen Master Series, and right move there for no doubt about that. Interesting choice, and it's possible her IQ Gold Pearl was a little too flippy or too sensitive, and take the lane out of play is what she kind of did with a urethane ball. Yeah, and you can create a strong roll on the ball. It's not all about the number of boards you can hook, unlike what we'll see with Blake Schmidt here. Blake, uh, two-handed style, just converted to it about a year and a half ago. And uh, great shot there by Blake out of Gates. And he's been on our Top Gun challenge. He finished in second place as a freshman a couple of years back when we were at Shorewood High School. And it's always easy for these young kids to convert from a one-handed well, to a two-handed game. It would be a little tough for you and I, Joey. Exactly. But if we go back in time, Phil, let's say you're 15, 16 years old and you're a decent bowler with a thumb, would you consider going thumbless? I would. I would definitely consider going thumbless. Or you're even seeing some of the players now, like Sean Maldonado, that are two-handed players, but they still have their thumb in the ball. Brian Valenta's... Another bowler that has his thumb in the ball two-handed, uh, where it's just the style helps them open their shoulders, they can keep their hand on the ball and help them really get under the ball and get it out of the lane with the revs and speed that they need to be successful. Yeah, I think you're going to see more and more players, if not converting, at least attempting to. And I know for myself, I would easily have converted as well. You, you know, you have no thumb issues, no span issues, uh, you'll always be able to create enough power on the ball. You just need to understand your equipment. As Adam goes for a team four bagger and comes a little light, leaves himself a doozy of a split. Yeah, 2A10 is pretty much a guaranteed open frame. One in a hundred shot at converting this. Well, I don't know. Ad Adam did convert the 710 in our league last year, uh, 19 and 20 at Classic Lanes in Oak Creek. He's going to so, have to probably bounce something out when he hits the two in the eight. Well, he can do it. He can get it down there in a hurry, even though he kind of hooked it at it. <laughs> and if that would have been falling the other way, he might have had a chance. But an open frame on the board for Team BAD. Still leaves them with the lead, regardless of what Sunset Bowl here does in their fourth frame, as we'll have Freddie Peterson up for his team's last frame before the commercial break. Freddie, staying with that ball. Well, a, they, they need some team strikes here. Yeah. That lane definitely playing differently than lane five. Tested by some ball changes and only one strike for Sunset Bowl so far. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't stay with that defiant soul with a little, little more response in the back end. The IQ Tour salad he's using just real easy on the back end, and I think he just needs a little more pop to, to trust it on the lane a bit switches to that ball that's older than he is for his spare to convert that four pin which he does get into our commercial break for this game join us back from Riviera Lanes for our team final of the 2015 High Five Gear Invitational in just a moment Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. Barbiere's Italian Inn, featured in onmilwaukee.com's In Search of the Perfect Pizza in January 2013. Near Miller Park on Blue Mound Road and on Milwaukee Avenue in South Milwaukee. Team final, 
2015 High Five Gear Invitational rolls on. Winner of this match, those teammates become foes in a five frame High Five Gear Challenge roll off to win a High Five Gear custom jersey valued at over $100. And Danielle Choup gets another strike for her team on the board. Four out of the first five for Team BAD. Danielle being two for two. Seems the left lane may be playing a little nicer than the right lane today. And that's one thing our viewers always have to realize. When you go to a pair of lanes, there's no guarantee they're going to play the same. Oh, and especially with wood lanes, you seem to get a little bit more difference throughout a house. Uh, at Bowl League here at Riviera on Thursday nights, and you know, going from pair to pair throughout the house, sometimes the high side of the house plays tighter than the low side. Some of these pairs, like seven and eight, are three or four boards different from lane to lane. Uh, five and six, in my experience, not that much different, uh, especially on the left side. Sometimes already, say lane six hooks just a little bit more. Lane five is a little bit tighter. And uh, with Jalen here trying to fight the extra hook on lane six with urethane, she just got a little left to target with it and. Went through the nose and shouldn't have too much of a problem picking up that 3610 though. Switches to that polyester ball. Nice off the hand and a textbook conversion of the 3610. Oh, beautifully done. And that's not an easy spare on any lane condition. No, not at all. And once you take that nine pin out of there, it really makes it a bit easier. That's always a tough one. You always talk about the guys on the PBA tour always talk about how they hate looking at that spare. They'd rather shoot at a washout than the 36910. Two hander Blake Schmidt up, looking to get a double on the board for his team. Five out of the first six. And boy, that ball is just rolling strong yep. all the way through the pin deck. They are making it look easy. <laughs> and halfway through the title match, they're in pretty good shape right now, being up a good 20 pins. And you see with Blake, the quick steps, getting into his fourth and fifth steps. We've seen that for years with Jason Belmonte. You see that with a lot of two-handed players where it's that quick transition to get the ball down through the swing into the slide. Okay. Right, sure comes high. Helps great added ball speed, good ball direction. A lot of top coaches, if you're a five-step, will suggest your first two steps being slow and the last three being quick. They call it the old slow, slow, quick, quick, quick <laughs> approach, and it helps deliver good momentum to the foul line. It might help some of our senior players who tend to lose some ball speed as they age. And unfortunately for Baker Schmidt, chops the six off the 10, and now a big gap between Team BAD and Sunset Bowl, 32 pins, and that can increase if Adam Richard here can put a turkey on the board for his team. He had a great opening shot and then came just a hair light his second attempt with the 2 8 10. See if he makes some type of an adjustment. Oh, he's left the target oh, there. Yeah, he, he kind of juiced it a little bit and missed left, like you said, and pays the price again. Adam is not too happy. No, and he, he knew it as soon as he let it go, where you know it's an overcorrection. It's easy to do. You make a shot that he probably may have thought was good the previous time on that lane, and as you said, you get to the bottom of the swing. You give it a little extra, you pull it a little bit on top of it, and then you have no chance of breaking up the split. And now, a glimmer of hope for Sunset Bowl, only down by 17, but it's going to take a strike here. Well, they, they got to start, right, they need to start with a strike, because they're going to need a potential double or turkey in there some way, because you can't bank on team bad opening. So Freddie sticking with that... IQ Tour solid, so something tells me he's going to let that ball go a little bit farther left than we've seen so far with that ball used to the pocket, which he has, and he just gets the six pin out. Everybody's friend of trip four <laughs> or trip six in Freddie's case. And still that glimmer of hope. Sunset Bowl, three frames remaining. Each bowler on these trio's teams with one more chance to try to lead their team to victory. You see Freddie running that one out, a little slap out there. He's got the PBA technique <laughs> down pat, both in the approach and the finish. I know Freddie and his dad both avid viewers of Extra Frame. And uh, Danielle Choup, how about that? Three for three on her attempts for her team. I'll tell you, she is the glue of that team today. Never wavering and just going high flush every shot. Yeah. The unsung hero. Absolutely. 
and more importantly, a double. Yeah, and it's as you see in a lot of a lot of Baker competition, whether it's three man, four man, or, or five person. You know, that bowler that steps up in the eighth frame is really the one that's key to get into a big finish for the team that game. And Danielle Troop's done her job. We'll see what Jalen Hayden can do the same thing. And she was going for their first potential double and comes up a little light. And again, urethane does not make that quick move when it comes off the pattern. And if you miss it a little bit at the bottom or get it a little right, you're going to leave this. Yeah, you just see that ball, you see the roll, it's strong, but there's just not enough angular response back to the pocket to take out the two, the four, and the five. Jalen's hobbies when she's not on lanes hunting and fishing. Saw a picture on her Facebook page a few weeks back where she bagged a bear up north in the northern parts of Wisconsin. Well, those are two so. good hobbies to help her bowling career because you definitely need patience in both of those as you do in bowl. And she comes up just a hair short on the 2 4 five. Yeah, And that, unfortunately, is going to be pretty much game over, barring a complete disaster for Team BAD. BAD up by 23 pins, can extend it to 33. If Blake Schmidt can keep doing what he's been doing all day long, and that's just throwing those two-handed strikes. Five steps, the quick shuffle of the line, and how about that for the messenger at Riviera Lanes? That is a two-handed messenger messenger special, and that's how many players have advantages that are two-handed and thumbless. Where you and I would leave the soft corner pin, seven or a ten, they're going to carry it. Yeah, either that messenger gets it, or they have enough speed where that six pin just doesn't lay in the flat gutter. It rattles out and kicks the ten pin out. So they may carry one or two of those a game consistently when they're throwing it well, and we may leave one or two flat tens a game throwing it well, and it's a difference of 20, 30 pins in a, in a game. Exactly, depending on where you carry those strikes, if it happens to be in a string, or happens to start a string. Let's see if Adam can get back on the strike train here. This would be a team turkey for team bad. We trusted that one out to the right where it needs to be and saws the rack apart. That's what we normally see from Adam on Mondays when he bowled in our league. And I'm sure we're going to see more of Adam. Oh, no doubt about that. All these young players, you know, Adam's getting his plans ready for college. Coming up shortly, you know, most of these players. Freddie, the only other player that's in college. All the rest of these young bowlers still in high school. So as they prepare for their college careers. Most of them will continue on bowling in college, whether it's at a club level or depending what program they go to, they may even be able to obtain a scholarship from bowling as Freddie Pearson almost leaves a 6-8, leaves himself just the 8-pin. Adam Stone's a 9, he got it a little right of target, definitely caught some friction, and it made a left turn coming off the end of the pad. So we've got Adam, Danielle, and Blake taking each other on in the high five gear challenge match next. It's a five frame singles match, and boy, tough to say who could be the favorite right now. It'd have to be either Danielle or Blake, because both of them gotten all their strikes so far this game. Adam's the only one with a little bit of struggles. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to give it to Danielle. I, I agree. I mean, as long as she doesn't get rattled bowling against the guys, but but Blake is going to be tough to beat. He has not shown any signs of weakness on this batter. Yeah, and the bowlers will bowl like they normally do in league or tournament play. They'll get on lanes five and six, so we're going to give Danielle, Adam, and Blake a little practice during this commercial break. Be back for the High Five Gear Challenge match. Five frames of excitement after this break. Join Joyce and I back in Riviera Lanes. Why do we have so many of our televised tournaments at Castle Lanes? Because we love being part of the wild side of bowling. If you're ready to get in touch with your wild side, go to castlelanes.com. High Five Gear Challenge match for the High Five Gear Invitational. Five frames of excitement here. Winner of this match walks out of here with the High Five Gear custom jersey valued at over $100.
Adam Rich is starting things off, and he can't get two messengers to take the 10 out. 0 for 2 on his email there, but uh, a good opening shot by Adam nonetheless. I will predict the first player to get a turkey will win this match, because it's going to take obviously more than a double, and my guess is we're going to see far less opens, because we get the cream of la, creme de la creme, as they say. Adam, good spare shooter, right at it. No problem on the cover. I realize he had that beard since sixth grade. Oh yeah, he's he's had been sporting that beard. I met him first when he was 15, and I actually checked his ID for a youth tournament to make sure he could bowl in the 15 and under division. But, but he's had that facial fescue since age 11, which is kind of a, interesting. Yeah. Just kidding, Adam. <laughs> but he has had it for quite a while. We affectionately call him Monsanto Cheeks <laughs> when he bowls in our league. And a strike for Danielle on the port side. A big break on the crossover for Danielle Choop. She struck every shot so far today on TV. Blake Schmidt going to be looking to do the same thing here. And uh, boy, I wish I could trip a six like this here at Riviera Lane sometimes on Thursday nights well, for league. You got to hit the one two though. So she, yeah. she hit the one two perfectly. You you need to do that, Phil. Then you can trip that six. <laughs> Big team tournament here. Scratch five man team tournament, December nineteenth. It's starting to fill up. If you want to get in on that, have a strong team, like to bowl a scratch event, you can give Riviera Lanes a phone call. See if there's any spots remaining as of this airing. I know there's only three or four left, so it may be full. But December nineteenth, if you want to see some quality bowling by some of the best teams in the Milwaukee. Southeast Wisconsin area show up here at Riviera Lanes beginning at 11 a.m. that Sunday and you can see some of the best team bowling you'll see in a long time. Rich nice, switches yeah, over to nice five. Nice off the hand, he got it far enough right, almost left another nine pin, but now that could have been a double for him and we'll see if the first person to three wins. Well, no matter what, these bowlers already have a $25 high five gear gift certificate in their pocket for making this high five challenge match. Well, the only other thing is, is if they strike out in the 10th frame, get all three, pardon me, the 5th frame, the high five gear 5th frame, which is similar to a 10th frame in a normal game, if they get all three strikes, they'll get another $25 high five gear gift certificate, because with high five gear, it's not just the shirts. You can get custom arm sleeves, you can get custom towels made, they even do custom bowling balls for plastic spare balls if you want custom graphics on a cover. You, know, you can just check out their website at high five gear, they've got a couple of specials going on right now, and... All kinds of things, of Christmas presents for your favorite bowler. So similar to the Visible from Brunswick. Similar to the Visible from Brunswick. So if you have a graphic that's respectable and can be placed onto a bowling ball, you can do so. They can put anything on the shirts. I was showing Joey a picture earlier of Anthony Pepe from the Pro Tour, who has a picture of his dachshund on the back of his bowling jersey. So they can do all kinds of custom work, and that's just left for Danielle out of the hand. No chance of yeah, making that baby split. Three shots in a row that have been left off her hand after looking invincible in the team play. Yeah, and that, a little bit of nerves maybe. First oh. time for her in a championship match on TV. and It could be. It and doesn't, you're, you're, you're bowling against two really good boys here. Yeah, and it doesn't matter right now. You get the nerves going no matter what, even if it's for just a, you know, a high five-year jersey. That's a $100 value. You don't think she'd like to strap one of those on her back and uh, oh, wear it? And then she has bragging on. rights for a while as well. Oh, absolutely. Blake Schmidt just keeps striking. Yeah, I'm not seeing much weakness in his game or lane play today. And a great shot there to get into our commercial break for this game. Last three frames of the High Five Gear Challenge coming up from Riviera Lanes and West Dallas. Providing premier equipment sales and services to Wisconsin bowlers since 1973. Check out our Wall of Fame and our current specials at bpsmilwaukee.com. High five gear challenge match, tight match right now. Blake Schmidt, the early double, early lead, 10 pins over Adam Richa. Adam needs this double. And a good lane here. It's a great opening shot. Left the 10. Faces up perfectly into the pocket. Perfectly done. Adam is in the game. 
He could lose with a 290 type game in the five frame format. Well, if you remember last time we had a similar format to this was at the Visit Sheboygan Open. And Freddie Peterson had to throw a perfect six frame game where he told a 180 to beat his opponents, Nick Hagen, in order to take home the top prize that day. It may take a perfect game for five frames to take home this title for Blake Schmidt, and that's just another ball left for Danielle, and unfortunately, pretty much mathematically out of it at this point in time with two frames remaining. Yeah, she'll hopefully regroup here and make this fair. And again, the right lane is drier, so it's not all her. But part of the bowling game is recognizing differences in lanes and execution, ball choice, staying up with the transition. I mean, it's quite a bit more complex than it was years ago. Danielle, a teammate of Maddie and Molly Brandos on that New Berlin Eisenhower girls team. So you see the Brandos girls sticking around, cheering her on. But that was a much better shot off the hand. In fact, that may have struck if she would have thrown at the first shot. But right now, that's going to leave Danielle Chu taking home a $25 high five gear gift certificate along with everything else she earned so far today here in this event once again I want to thank high five gear for another year of sponsorship I want to thank all of our sponsors that have been on board since we started including Barbier's Italian Inn and Action Heating and Cooling looking for the turkey Blake Schmidt they are all just looking pretty much the same except the one messenger he had in the team of it in the team game. He's had a couple six pins off the wall to get the ten out, but that one the six pin went right into the ten. And he may have just bumped in a little bit, maybe a two and two move with his feet and target left, just to retain that energy. Adam, Adam Richard. And he's on a double, so we know he needs this one. Yeah, this one to keep pace, and that he's over the top of it, it's left and yeah. There's one you don't see very often, the 3-9 out of a right-hander, Joey. Uh, yeah, when I see that, it's with the 3 or the 6 and 10. But, yeah, that was left off his hand, and, and he knows he's got room to the right to throw it. Just a, a miscue on his part. Yeah, you can see he's already trying to follow through with the crossover, <laughs> follow through faking it with the left hand. But, unfortunately, even with a spare from Adam, it's going to take a very errant shot from Blake Schmidt to get Adam back into this high five gear challenge match with only two frames remaining. One frame for Richa. Well, Danielle Chup can still shoot 95, even with a couple of opens. Maximum score, of course, in the five frame game would be 150 with seven strikes. The fifth frame being just like a conventional 10th frame of a game. I like the way her shoulders open and close through the swing, lets her ease through it, and just gets the five out, does the job. Great shot there, yeah, just like her spare attempt on the right lane. She's in the 1-3, back in the saddle. Now, Joe, you've probably had some younger players come in the shop, say they've experimented with two-handed play. Do you have those bowlers, have any of them start out with lower ball weights than what they normally used, or do they all usually stay with the 14 or 15 pound equipment well, that they've thrown yeah. beforehand? Yeah, it depends if they're an established player or not. Established players typically will stay with the same weight because they've grown accustomed to it and they can generate the ball speed. And Blake throws yet another. <laughs> but some of the beginning two-handers or no-thumbers will typically choose a pound lighter just so it makes the transition easier and then they will eventually work their way back into their heavier weights. So yeah, and always consult your pro shop guy. If you're looking to do anything to change your style sometimes, even if you're looking to stay one-handed and trying to do something a little different, sometimes a pitch change or a span change will make a big difference on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, another ball a little left off the hand, a few boards left of where I think Adam wanted to throw it. They kind of roll that oil line right to the 1-3. Well, his chance at an additional $25 high five gear certificate for striking out the fifth frame is now gone, but he'll still take home $25 for making this high five gear challenge match. No problem covering up the spare. See you later. His maximum score, 107, so he'll finish in second place in this high five gear challenge. Blake Schmidt just waiting him back. He knows he's got a chance to not only lock up the high five gear custom jersey worth over $100, but he could get another $25 
Gift certificate by striking out the 10th frame. Same thing for Danielle Chu. Right, we see Adam got that ball further right, and he's got a good swish zone to play with, but there are times the ball just comes a little left of where you want it, off the hand or the footwork. But he's shaking his head when he gets back there. Yeah. He knows it's yeah. just... He's got, he has the physical game, there's no doubt about it. It's just something that's going to have to come with experience. Well, and he has a great physical game, and but that's only part of bowling. A little, a little bit left, just about a border so left off the hand. And for his direct as Danielle Choup is playing the lanes, it doesn't take that much of an angle change through the front part of the lane to get extra response through that pin deck, slicing off the head pin from the three and leaving the three, six, nine, ten. Right, and you know, with lane six hooking more, it could be hooking more in the front or mid lane, and when you don't have a lot of ball speed, or you're not playing far left on the approach, it's hard to get that length you, that your eyes visually want to see. Cross lane at that 3, 6, 9, 10. He's got a shot at it and just hooks a little too much at the last second and basically chops the 6 off the 10. She finishes with 63. Not the end of the day she was looking for, but good showing by Danielle, Danielle Choup all day long. And now, well, we've seen it once before in these short frame formats. We saw it at the Visit Sheboygan Open with a perfect game by Freddie Peterson IV. And now, could we see the same thing from Blake Schmidt? Looking for four in a row, looking for five. He's got the fifth one, Joey. And yeah. once again, 10 back. Yeah, that was another great shot. And I don't know if he missed a little in or if he was just playing that deep. But that's smarter than playing with friction. Yeah. Especially with his rev rate. Watch him take that eight pin straight back. Basically splits the eight and the nine. Two more strikes. Gets himself another $25 high five gear spends, gift card. Spends a lot of time wiping that oil off the ball. And when you're playing five or ten left of everybody else on the pair, you're going to be in the oil. And there's a definite need to wipe that oil clean. Knows what he wants to do when he gets that ball in his hand, though. He's set and ready to go, and once again, 10 back. And notice how quickly the pins leave the deck. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny when we so show some of these in slow motion, because here comes one of my normal strikes in reverse, and that's Blake's in half speed, so. <laughs> well, high five gear custom jersey already in the bag. Looking for perfection and another $25 high five gear gift certificate. And that would be all 10 strikes on TV for Blake Schmidt today. He should throw two more just to see <laughs> if he'd get the 300. We let we let Freddie Peterson do that in the visit to Boygan, and he left an 8-pin on his next shot, so I don't know if we're going to necessarily do that when we get the awards to these players. Looking for perfection in the high five gear challenge. There it is, 150. That was his first mixer. Great finish for Blake Schmidt. We're going to get these prizes awarded to the bowlers, and Joe Serrano and I will be back to wrap up this High Five Gear Invitational from Riviera Lanes after this short break. Blake Schmidt, nothing but perfection today at the 2015 High Five Gear Invitational. Struck on every shot in the team event, struck on every shot in the High Five Gear Challenge match, and he's walking away with a custom jersey courtesy of High Five Gear worth more than $100. Our next show coming up is the Junior Hall of Fame Finals from AMF Bolero in Wauwatosa. For my friend Joe Serrar, I'm Phil Bradlow. Parents take the kids bowling, they have fun for life, and we'll see you next time from AMF Bolero.